Hello, this video looks at two examples of finding the equation of a tangent plane. In the previous video, I'll put the link down below, um, I talked about how we arrive at the formulas, looked at the concept. Now we're going to look at the, the calculation. So just a reminder, uh, so we're interested in finding the equation of a tangent plane of a function that is explicitly defined. Z is a function of x and y. We're interested at a particular point, x not y not, on the surface uh, so when you plug those in, you get z naught, and we want to find the tangent planes equation. I'm going to show you two different approaches. Uh, here's the uh, approach number one. It's sort of like a point slope form where you have z minus z naught is your x partial, evaluated at x naught y naught, times the quantity x minus x naught plus your y partial, evaluated at x naught y naught times the quantity of y minus y naught. And then approach number two is kind of like a slope intercept form where we have um, a general format, standard kind of equation of a plane, and there are seven variables there. But we know six of them. And so we'll let the A and B and C be the following. If you look above there, the coefficient on X is the partial with respect to X, and the coefficient on Y is the partial with respect to Y. When it comes to the coefficient on Z, you're gonna have to um, set it equal to zero by subtracting it over. So C is negative one, um, and then, the x naught, y naught, and z naught take the place of the x, y, and z. So those six guys we know, and then it's just a matter of finding the seventh guy, solve for d. So here are two examples. I'll do one each way, and you just decide which way you like best. So our equation is z equals 3x squared minus y squared plus 2x. Interested in the point when x is 1 and y is negative 2, turns out then that z is a 1. And our job find the equation of the tangent plane. And so we have our x naught, y naught, z naught, and we just need to take some partials. This is kind of polynomial in nature, so the partials should be straightforward. So what is the partial with respect to x? Holding y constant, we'll have 6x plus 2. When you plug in your point, x naught, y naught into that, what you get out is a number. And uh, if x is 1, you'll get an 8 out, because there are no y's there. Now we move to the y partial. And it's going to be negative 2y. And then plugging y naught into that, we'll get positive 4. Pretty straightforward. Go into the format of the equation. z minus z naught equals the partial at x minus x naught plus the other partial at y minus y naught. The x partial was 8 and the y partial was 4. I mean, technically you're done. Generally, though, what you'll see is that the standard form of the equation uh, has them all set equal to zero. And so we will distribute and set equal to zero, and we'll have the answer. Now, remember, this is only easier, I feel, because of the fact that we have a nice polynomial-like um, function and easy partials. Um, in our next example, we'll have more difficult partials. I don't want you to think that the other way is more difficult. And just you can just, it's the style that you like. You just choose the style that you want. So 8x minus 8 and 4y plus 8 and then subtract the z over and add the 1 over, and you'll find then that we have um, the 8s cancel out. And we're done. 8x plus 4y minus z plus 1 equals 0. That's the equation of the tangent plane at that point to that surface. z is defined explicitly as a function of x and y. In example number 2, uh, more difficult to take the partials, but we'll approach it the other way where we going to plug in six variables and find out what the seventh variable is. So z is a, a square root of x plus e to 4y. Interested in the point when x naught is 3 and y naught is 0. And then if you turn out, you know, we plug it in, you'll see that uh, z naught would be 2. And so, yep, we still need partials, okay, evaluated at these points. And so we have x plus e to 4y is our function. What's our x partial? Well, whenever you have the square root of a function, the derivative is 1 over 2 times the square root of that function. Then you chain rule and you multiply by the derivative of the inside. In this case, though, the x derivative of the inside is a 1. All right, great. So x is 3 and um, uh, y is 0. Plug these guys in. And we get the 2 out from the square root times the other 2 from the partial derivative. It's a fourth. All right, great. Let me move to the y partial. Starts off the same way. 1 over 2 square roots of e to the x plus 4y, 
e to the four x plus e to the four y. And then we chain rule though, we take the derivative of the inside function with respect to y, it's four e to the four y, not a one like above with respect to x. We plug three and zero into that. We could actually cancel the four and the two out if you want, you don't have to, but you could. When we plug the three and the zero into that, the square root's gonna be two still. Uh, e to the zero is gonna be a one times the two. It's gonna be two over two. It's gonna be a one. I circle these, I put them in red. These are our values for A and B, two of our uh, six numbers that we know. Um, the other uh, three are there in X not, Y not, Z not. And uh, in this setting, what we do is we set the um, C equal to negative one. The coefficient on Z is a negative one. So A is a fourth, B is one, C is negative one, X not is three, Y not is zero, Z not is two. And this is gonna give us what D is. Our job is to figure out what D is. And so um, uh, one's times zero, so that goes away. Uh, generally, you wanna multiply by four, but this is, these are nice enough fractions that we can just do it um, without that. Um, two is better known as eight fourths, and three take away eight fourths is this negative five fourths. You ship it over to the other side, you'll get that D is five fourths. You're done. You have like, you know, like in the form of Y equals MX plus B, you're done. You have the M, you have the, um, the B, you're done. Well, here we have the A, the B, and the C, and the D, we're done. Except for you don't normally don't see the equation having these fractions in it. If we, if, if more, more often than not, we have integers. And so we're going to multiply everything by four. Clear out the fractions. And we end up with X plus 4Y minus 4Z plus 5 equals zero. Okay, so you decide which approach you like. It's all your own personal taste. Point slope or slope intercept kind of. All right, this brings it, uh, this video to an end. I don't want to make it too long. In the next video, I'll post a link on um, in the description. Uh, we will look at well, what happens if the function is defined implicitly, where you can't solve for z in terms of x and y, but you still want to be able to find the equation of the tangent plane. Uh, that'll be in the next video. All right, thanks for, thanks for watching. Uh, like and subscribe. Comment down below if you have any questions or, or comments. Thank you.